Okay. Well, we're going to see what we can do with the pallets we have. Uh, maybe later, probably not, because it looks like it's got a storm. And it's heading our way. But uh, let's maybe take another pallet run. Um, I've been working out here already a little bit, and I've got uh, a couple pallets over here and the stack from over there that we got yesterday afternoon. Um, probably get them all up today. Uh, that's my goal. And we're just going to continue to work this way, get the first level up. Um, when you're putting pallets together and, and using pallets as a wall, uh, it's key to put your heavier, solid, stronger pallets at the bottom for obvious reasons. And then you're going to stack your lighter, flimsier, or uh, you know, pieced pallets up at top. And what I mean by pieced pallets, if you just put a uh, two by four and then make your own pallet or put some slats up there, this is what we do anyway. Um, and then when we go um, to finish or face these walls, we'll fill this gap in with, uh, if we need to, with uh, we might pull this piece off since it's broken and put another piece up, up here. Um, and then sometimes we wrap them with uh, Visqueen. Um, well, we're definitely going to wrap the outside walls with Visqueen, um, the blackout Visqueen, and then or the inside walls with some carpet because you can typically find carpet just about anywhere. And that will strengthen the walls as well. So we typically try not to do that until we have the roof on, especially the carpet, because if it gets saturated uh, with water or rain, it will mildew, mold stink, and it becomes a lot, he lot more heavier. So um, let's get to work. Well, it's about to open up here, um, and I just ran out of pallets that I want to use for the bottom. Um, let me show you real quick what I'm thinking. A lot of these pallets here are either, as you can see, the piece, the brace that we fastened to, sandwich the two pallets together. You've got this hangover, so we need to either cut this off, or we'll pull this pallet apart and use it um, for scrap. It's a thin pallet anyway. This pallet is a perfect pallet to see, you know, it comes right over the edge so we can sandwich this to another pallet and screw the two in to make it sturdy, but this is a very light pallet. And I think I want to save any light pallets that we have for the second layer, um, but you can see, same thing here with the lip. Um, a lot of scrap wood. Um, some of these pallets, like this one here, doesn't have the edge to it, which we'll probably still use it. Um, it's a smaller pallet though. Um, but we, I used one of those right here, and I'll show you what I did. Um, when it comes to using a pallet that's damaged or missing a piece, uh, you're just going to have to improvise a little bit. But uh, with this pallet here, you see it doesn't have this brace, whether it's missing, it's been cut off, or I don't know. But I uh, just basically pieced some pallet pieces to tie it in together. This, uh, this wall is just sturdy, sturdy enough for what it needs to be. And then once we go up another level, we'll, we'll connect them to whatever brace or whatever walls we usually put long pieces of two by four or whatever across and, and tie them in everywhere that we can to strengthen the whole unit. Um, wind's getting pretty windy here. But uh, this room is is, uh, is pretty much done. The outline or the base, unit, base of it is pretty much done. Um, we might put a piece here to continue it and put a door right here. Um, or we might just make this thing the whole door. Um, but you'll enter into this room, probably put something here where you have to kind of force your way this way. Um, there's an emergency exit which we'll have to um, put uh, the, the exit with uh, cloth or with this wing or carpet, whatever the case may be. That'll be the emergency exit for this room. And then once we go up another level, we'll, we'll put a, a cross beam across the two to, to support this corner. You can see it's, it's not really that, that sturdy here. Um, and then you go right through here into the hallway. This piece is not going to be here, obviously. Um, we've got another opening here, which is going to be another exit, not necessarily an emergency exit. You're probably going to have an emergency exit right here. Uh, probably put a little space in between there and tie this wall in with where this pallet starts to go that way. Um, and this will be the emergency exit for guests to go down all the way down the side of the house if they need to. This doorway here will be exited, be tied in with this door. We kind of 
when you're, when, you're, when you're planning on your floor plan and you're putting your pallets or your panels up, you want to make sure that your actors can get around the haunted house without having to go through the entire thing to get to their section. Or if there is an emergency and we need whoever's working here to get to the front door, they'll basically come right through this door to this egress area, which is the egress area. And I'm probably going to keep a door, uh, an opening here. And then if you can see the line, there's going to be a door here that leads right to the front. And then the front entrance is right here. So quickly you can get right through from one side to the other. Um, and we're probably going to have another door in this corner that goes into the other egress area here. And there's probably going to be emergency, uh, you know, the more openings, the more exits we can have, the safer and the easier to be for actors to get from one place to another and possibly to, to, um, to work multiple sections. So uh, we have to keep, you have to kind of keep that in mind, think ahead, because you'd hate to build your structure and be like, oh, I need to put a door here, and then you have to cut in your pallets, or you have to move panels, or whatever the case may be. So we try to, to utilize that the best, uh, best way we can. Um, the only stipulation I'm having, which is not going to be an actor per se in that room, maybe one person um, when we have an extra person, but the quickest way to get into there is going to come around here or come down this hallway or through that that uh, emergency exit there so um, it, might, it might have been a great idea to have this egress hallway to have an opening right here um, so we can get in right from this this egress hallway that I'm in now um, but they just have to come back here through here and then that way so I'd like to keep this room as solid as as blocked off as, as and as plain and, and, and minimalistic as possible so um, like I said, we might be doing another pallet run. If we can do that, we can get some more base pallets down. Um, that'll be that'll be good. If we had the if we had the pro, if we had the pallets, putting them up. I mean, this is just me. I, in all honesty, no offense to anybody else, but I've done all this by myself, and it's taken me, in total, maybe an hour to do this mat this much. And this is just the basic layer, but it doesn't take much just time to get these pallets up where you need them. Um, as long as you have them, and that's the key is we just don't have we don't have them yet So hopefully we'll get the guys over here. We'll do another pallet run this afternoon and throughout the week We'll be doing at least a pallet run a day Hopefully we won't run out of pallets. We have a couple connections that that know people that know people so hopefully those will turn out <laughs> <laughs> All right, Seth, I got you. Don't throw it though. Bam All right Yep. Thanks, Bass Pro Shop. Thanks to Tyler and his uh, excessive uh, visits to Bass Pro Shop and knowing the management here, we're able to establish a uh, pickup location. They say, as long as we don't take them all, um, we can come by whenever they're actually having another shipment coming in tomorrow. So we have another, uh, probably another load of pallets like these. And these are good pallets that we can get tomorrow. Woo! All right, well, uh, thanks to Tyler, we did get another about 15, 18 pallets. Um, pretty good pallets, too. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get those uh, put up. And, uh, well, I've got still got some light uh, to work with. So uh, let's do it. To it. We're recording? We're recording, all right. So I can't see a damn thing with the light in my face, but uh, it's getting too dark and I'm running out of pallets. Um, again, it's the story of my life, running out of pallets, but um, I'll show you what we got. This is the front door actually right here. So we're up to the front door of the haunt. This is actually between here and here will be the front door. Um, and you'll be walking into this room, which will go right down this line. The line is pretty much gone, but it's right down this line. So uh, this will be the first the first room. Um, and then this is the hallway. The scare, there's a door here. The scares will go down this hallway. Now this hallway is a little bit bigger than planned. Wider, anyway, than planned. Um, not too concerned about that. Um, the bigger the better, as long as it's not narrower than planned. Um, but you can see 
that's a pretty decent length hallway. And then I've already talked to you before about either having this whole door or putting a door here into the first room. So it's taken shape. Um, and just continuously making pallet runs and everything. We'll, uh, we'll get this thing knocked out hopefully in the three weeks that we have, less than three weeks now, um, to have it built. Um, and then we'll start decorating from there. But uh, that's it, that's it for the night. I'm gonna call it a night. Make sure to subscribe, like us, follow us. Uh, if you're local, share, donate, um, volunteer, whatever you can do. It would be greatly appreciated, if nothing more than just come. So um, we'll see you guys later. Probably have a video tomorrow, maybe. We'll be working on